Uh, thank you very much for the invite today, and I really don't like using a mic, but I can see I have to use one for the video recorders. Um, actually, it's going to be really challenging for me because I've got uh, to tell you a little bit about APS, and we've been in business for 10 years, so I've got uh, basically 10 minute, minutes to tell you about 10 years of our history. So, um, interesting uh, tagline we've got there is that we are really a better banking solution, and we're not a bank. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour of what we do. One of the big differences we do believe in is very strong customer engagement. And what we mean by that is actually, uh, I took a quote from somebody, Fedor Bank, uh, which is another FinTech uh, provider, and he had a great quote, the CEO, he said basically, if I can't do something in 60 seconds, I don't want to do it for my customer. I took that one step further. If I can't do it in 10 seconds, I don't want to do it for the customer. We have a we have a consumer, we have a business application where some people actually take anywhere between three months to six months to get a bank account in this country and many other countries. Uh, we actually redefine that process where actually you can go online to our website as a business actually apply online, and within about three minutes, uh, you will actually finish the application, and within about five to six seconds, you will have a sort code and account number in your hand to start trading. That's what makes us different. The other thing is that we're kind of different from a standpoint of being in the fintech uh, world. I don't consider myself a smart person, but the one thing that I do bring to the organization and what our company brings to this organization or within this industry is all of us have deep experience in payments. I was 18 years old when I actually was a customer service rep for Bank of America back in the US. This is all I've done for 30 years. Even when you're dumb, you can actually get pretty good after 30 years in one single thing, which is payments. And I absolutely am passionate about payments. We also talk about, um, I, I really find it interesting because I have been in it for 30 years and I love this concept of big data. I've been doing big data for about 20 years. Uh, the only thing that has changed between now and uh, then is the fact that computer speeds are probably 45,000 times faster and uh, basically space and data storage is about 1,000 times cheaper. But it's been out there, and that's what we've been doing also for basically 20 years, knowing our customer through the data that they do. I hate focus groups. Customers do not tell you what they want to do when they're in financial service. It's a sensitive thing. Basically, the way we know what customers do is not by asking them, by watching them and looking at them and analyzing them and finding products that will actually make them a better service and a better product solution for them. And we actually provide very unique product capabilities. Um, and because we've been innovators, we were the first Elmi to actually become a principal member of MassGuard. We we're the first non-bank globally, not just in the UK, not just in Europe, globally, to be a direct member of MassGuard, providing great experiences for us and uh, value to our customers. And more recently, uh, if you go onto the post office website, um, basically the providing of banking services to uh, customers through the 11,000 uh, branches, we are the first non-bank uh, in the UK that actually provides deposit, withdrawal, and balance, uh, balance inquiry functions at uh, post office. That's what we do. And I could list for many more uh, minutes in terms of the number of firsts that we had, but I don't have time. 10 years of UK financial tech experience, disruptive banking, payment, and credit solutions. So we went from being a general purpose card to actually uh, being really a banking solution partner recognized by the London Stock Exchange. And interesting enough, most people don't even know who we are, but we actually service over 30,000 SMEs, 1.3 million consumers, and over 30% of the public sector market with over 100 programs. It does take 10 years to get to that point, though. Um, who we serve, businesses. Again, one of the big things, 50% of these customers actually don't get bank accounts. I could go through a long story around basically even I couldn't get a bank account actually in the UK. Consumers, you've got 7 million underbank. Many people actually, there's not that many unbanked customers, but actually the ability to get overdraft, the ability to actually get full service banking in this country is extremely difficult. That's who we serve. And free banking is a bunch of crock. Actually, the OFT has actually proven, not me, OFT, have proven that basically the average free bank account in the UK is 151 pounds a year. No doubt. Our product is 60 pounds a year. 
it provides much better value than the free bank accounts that you see out there today. And there's a huge opportunity with universal credit, and thank God Ian Duncan Smith is still in office. Uh, I do believe universal credit will go out. I think it will take a lot longer than people think, but it will get there. And there's a 50 billion uh, pound opportunity within the public sector. It's slow, it's low margins. I don't recommend anybody going into it. We are there, but we're gonna basically try to make it work because I am a taxpayer, and I've been at these public sector uh, meetings, and there is five billion of fraud going on right now where your tax money is going down the drain. The type of electronic banking that we offer and many other fintech companies offer can really eat into that and save basically the government money, and may maybe instead of actually creating bedroom taxes and actually reducing benefits for people, and even though I'm a capitalist, I do believe in the social welfare of people, why don't you take that five billion and actually do something better with it instead of giving it to criminals? <clears throat> in terms of what we offer, in terms of business, credit, and consumer, you look at it. We, have, we are a diversified banking operation. We, we provide everything from banking accounts, expense cards, purchasing cards, credit cards, overdrafts, currency, even virtual accounts. Hey, when you're in FinTech, you gotta look cool, so we even do virtual accounts for you. But it really is around credit offerings, and I'm gonna show you a little slide that I don't show to too many people, so you're very privileged tonight, that basically, I really do believe that it's very hard to play in the payments game and be ultra profitable without actually having a credit proposition there. Do you know why uh, actually banks are able to offer free bank accounts? Mostly because they cross sell credit. And this is a great example. You go out and just do prepaid a loan or basically a bank account loan, you will lose money. It's very hard to actually acquire a customer at 24 pounds actually, and actually have a lifetime value of 11 pounds. It doesn't make a lot of sense. If you add credit onto it, that's where the big value generator is, and isn't that, uh, that's not a very smart idea because pretty much every high street bank actually knows exactly what they're doing, and that's how they make tons of money every single year. Corporate is another great opportunity out there, and certainly a credit card also, but it really does prove to me that in the digital banking space, and when you see these uh, new players come on board, you are gonna find out they will end up with credit because if you wanna make profit, you are gonna have to do some sort of credit proposition or create tremendous scale. In terms of how we differentiate, uh, certainly big data, actually providing the right customer service will create the right value for that customer. And what I really find interesting is that in payments, specifically, it takes a long time to actually get adoption. And I love people talking about they're gonna be the next greatest thing. And I like, this, I like this slide because it just tells you where we've gotten to by becoming a three billion pound organization. It took us 83 months to generate the first billion. It took us 22 months to create the next billion. Last year, it took us 11 months, and next year, it will take us seven months. <sighs> this was an ugly period for us. <laughs> it was a slog. To get consumer adoption, to get business adoption, really was a difficult thing. But in terms of that, one interesting thing that we are, we love to call ourselves uh, a FinTech company, but the great thing about our company is, we make money. And I think that's important. 33% annual growth rate, and these are five-year growth rates. Some of you guys weren't even born when I actually started making money. And uh, EBITDA over 70%. Uh, growth rate uh, for our organization over the last five years. Sounds exciting. Just remember, I spent five years losing a shitload of money. So just remember, I'm excited now, but there were some dark times in those first five years getting this adoption curve back up. And so with my experience, I always kind of look a little bit naysayant on individuals overall. One of the things that we like, we love being in the UK. I know you hear my American accent. I've been here 14 years and I have pledged allegiance to the Queen, so I do have a UK passport. Um, 
I, there is no question, I do believe the UK is the fintech capital world, and if you are in this space, it's a great space to be. And the one thing that we really have tried to do, and the thing that we really try to put upon our shareholders and to our customers, we are really integrating being the best alternative credit provider with being the best alternative credit bank. And when I started this presentation, and, I, and I'll end this presentation, is that we really are providing a very diverse banking services product, and you don't have to be a bank to do it, and we think we're the best at doing it. So thank you very much. Questions? <laughs> Questions for Rich. Who's got a question? So you say you're a program of MasterCard, is that right? Uh, we're a, uh, sorry, we're a principal member of MasterCard. So you're, you're able to do what you're doing as a pro, but as a principal member of MasterCard via the, for the UK banking stuff, or how do you enable the, uh, the services for uh, the banking aspects via the sort code and the account issuing? So our current account number, we use agency banking through uh, RBS, technically NatWest, but I know they're the same thing, but our contract's with NatWest. And that only covers the UK? It only covers the UK, correct. Mm -hmm. Is it a prepaid model or is it a full UK account model? I, I consider it a full UK current account model. Uh, the FCA wouldn't want, won't let me call it a bank account because I don't have the proper license, but right. it is a current account. Sort code, account number, and a debit card associated with it. And then there's an online facility to do all what you need to do. Online facility to basically do faster payments, and uh, we were the one of the other first we were, we were the first e-money issuer that actually was able to enable direct debit too. So you are an e-money institution? We are an e-money is okay. institution. Yeah, you said you've entered the um, fraud. Um, sector in the public um, sector. Could you tell me more, more about that? <laughs> the, well, I, the one thing I will say is the, uh, the one benefit that we provide to um, the uh, local authorities, and we basically uh, engage, we've, we're with 32 local authorities today, and what we do is the money that actually goes on to our debit card proposition is when they sign up to it, it's still the government's money. So if they see any impropriety, if they see any uh, misuse of those funds, they don't have to go through any other activity except to basically give us a call and we can immediately re repatriate uh, those funds back to the, the government. Uh, we have repatriated well over five million pounds in less than 18 months back to the government where I suspect there was dubious activity that they've requested that activity to be done. That's good. <laughs> So, um, are your operations currently only in the UK, and if so, what are the international plans? Um, yeah, actually, by, by being an electronic money uh, issuer, we were the first ones to actually passport uh, through Europe. So we actually have operating permissions in every other country. Uh, we made two, to uh, be honest, uh, it's always great to learn from failures. We did two um, uh, uh, launches into different countries. Well, uh, one into Romania. You say, why Romania? Uh, it just happened that I got the UK, um, the Romanian post office, which was the largest employer and had 7,000 branches. I thought it would be a good idea. Idea. Um, uh, it failed uh, because I didn't realize that there was as big a black or so they say gray economy and people uh, say that basically you got two two sets of organization or two sets of consumers ones that can't get a bank account and ones that don't want a bank account in Romania a lot of people don't want a bank account they actually still want to get paid in cash uh, so that one actually didn't uh, f uh, f uh, work so well and then of course France uh, hopefully there's no uh, French people in this room um, but the one thing French people hate are Brits and Americans. Um, so uh, <laughs> so the, um, we actually went to the French regulator and uh, we pushed and pushed and we even got, um, they basically wouldn't let us in. We got Brussels to actually overrule their, um, um, their tendency to not let me in um, and they basically ignored Brussels. So those were my two uh, att attempts to get outside the UK. I think it will get better over time. Many other e-money issuers have been more successful than I have in this space, but boy, I've had some really bad experiences in terms of going beyond UK. Uh, just trying to understand your business model, which I should know about, but I don't. And so uh, basically, I put money in your, into your business and, uh, as, a, as an account, and uh, you don't pay me interest, but I pay you some money, but you handle the money much better than the bank would do. Is that the, is that the point? Uh, from a value proposition, uh, yeah. We, we create a lot less entry barriers to get the account right. and to service your account. Thank you. 
Um, basically, how do you, is this a consumer play? Oh, no. I, actually, we, uh, in 2005, it was a 100% consumer play. Right. Uh, I will say that the economic value of the SME play now and the um, the, the fact that actually SMEs actually treat businesses worse than they treat consumers, I've got a, even a better proposition for SMEs than I do consumers today. How do you, um, obviously you have a blacklist in terms of the businesses that you can't offer accounts to, is that correct? Uh, yeah, because uh, the fact that with NatWest, they will put some uh, restrictions on, on me, which are quite frustrating, uh, but primarily the money service businesses, I can't actually provide a bank account to. And so there's been a problem for five or six years here to where no crypto companies have been able to get proper UK banking facilities. Is that something that you're discussing with RBS and NetWest? Could you imagine how that conversation is going to go? Uh, I do, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I totally uh, empathize because we've had to actually close a number of accounts down because of changing policies. There is a big move, uh, the payment systems regulator, I'm very encouraged about. I sit on the board of the Emerging, pa Emerging Payments Association, and one of the things that I want, and some, something that it may seem foreign, uh, is I want direct access. I, I want my own sort code and account number. I don't want to go through NatWest, Barclays, or anybody like that. And people said that that was not possible uh, when I went and said I want a direct MasterCard membership because they said only banks can have it. I do believe in the next two years, I hope I can come back to you and say, I got my own sort code and account number and I can provide Bitcoin, uh, money service businesses, money transfer businesses accounts as they should have been provided 20 years ago. Okay, um, I'm just trying to understand the alternative credit provider side of the prepaid model. So you got your, I put money in and I use it as a debit card. What's the proposition on the credit side? And was that revenue graph, which is very impressive, um, is that risk adjusted revenue or is that before impairment? Uh, about 25% of the uh, revenue and profit graph is basically credit. Uh, but to your point, are we a prepaid card or are we a debit card? We're a debit card with an overdraft. We're a current account with an overdraft. So we've kind of moved beyond actually being uh, playing that prepaid electronic money space. And we are providing that overdraft facility, both to consumers and businesses. So that's where the credit plays a part. And then as they basically use that facility, we move them into uh, revolving open-ended credit uh, products. So, thank you. But, but Rich will be around afterwards, I hope, for, for more questions. Thank you very much, Rich. Thank you.